In this video, I'm going to be telling you how you should play your cards in dating based on your looks. In other words, depending on which category you fall, you'll have a different set of procedures to get the best bang for your buck out of dating. Any blue box is an action you need to take, for example, looks maxing, and any green box is a question you need to ask yourself. The first of which is, are you a sub-5, normie, or chad? And if you don't know which category you are, here are the examples shown from the beginning again. And here's a few more extra just for good measure. I also want to point out if you are both a normie and exceptionally short, e.g. 5 foot 6 or below, you should answer sub 5 for the first question. Anyway, for the next question, we'll take a look at the normies. If you are a normie, the next thing you need to ask yourself is have you looks maxed? This means ticking all, if not the vast majority, of the boxes I showed in my looks maxing guide video, especially the important ones, such as your body and hygiene. If your answer to this question is no, you'll need to temporarily put the brakes on your dating life and instead focus on maximising your appearance. There is also one other group that needs to follow this box, and that is the sub-fives answering yes to their first question, which is can you looks max to normie tier? If you answer yes to this box, you also need to drop everything and looks max for the time being. The purpose of this question is to make a separation between sub-fives with and without potential. A sub-five with potential is somebody who can looks max their way to being a normie, which mostly applies to sub-fives who are merely overweight. Meanwhile, a true sub-five is somebody who cannot looks max his way out of trouble. Anyway, if you're in either of the two groups who's currently at this box, after you've finished looks maxing, you rejoin back to the main normie path, which leads to the next question, are you neurotypical? This is essentially asking if your character slash personality is generally normal, you don't have any psychological disorders and you don't have any learning difficulties. If your answer to this question is no, you get sent back to the sub-5 path alongside the true sub-5s where the next question is do you have money? There's different ways of measuring this, but a few ways of measuring is if you have over 200k on the sidelines, or you currently work and by the end of the year you have over $25,000 left over after you've spent money on all the other things that need to be paid for. Anyway, if your answer to this question is no, move on to the next one, which is can you make significant money in future? And if your answer to this question is also no, you move on to the final box of this path, which is an action box, and states you need to find fulfilment in other areas of life besides dating. This might be sports, hobbies, video games, and so on. The reason this is the action you should take is because it's the path that is most likely to lead to the most amount of happiness based on the previous questions you answered. Rewinding by one step, if your answer to making money in the near future is yes, then you also need to move on to an action box, which is money maxing. This is similar to looks maxing, where you drop everything for the time being and get done what you need to do. And once you accumulate enough resources, you move back onto the main path for sub-fives, where the next question asks you if you're willing to uptake either one of two extreme measures traveling or surgery. If you choose to travel, you move on to the final box for this path, which is moving abroad to different countries where the dating game is much easier. A good example are the countries of Southeast Asia, such as Thailand, where I believe the YouTuber Hamza is located now. I think this is an excellent option to take because in these countries, the other men are a lot shorter, have less money, which overall lowers the bar for yourself in dating. Alternatively, going down the surgery route, the next question is can surgery make you a normie? If your answer to this question is yes, this implies there are certain procedures available that can bump you up to normie tier, in which case you'll be able to head back to the main centre path along with the other normies who answered yes to being neurotypical. However, if your answer was no and you're in a position where surgery won't help, if this is the case, then your only option will be to travel the world like the other sub-fives. Anyway, that's the complete tree for the sub-fives done and part of the normies too. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, now is a good time to press a like button and leave any thoughts you have in the comments below as it helps the YouTube algorithm. 
now carrying on with the par for normies. The next question is probably the most important. Are you looking for a relationship or looking to date casually? Have a long think about this question. I suspect this is going to be the biggest fork that will split my audience right down the middle, as I believe a lot of you watching are still deciding what's best for you at this point in your life. I personally pick the relationship route, but first we'll explore the casual dating option. If you're only interested in casual dating, you are again asked if you have access to money. If your answer is no, the best way forward for you will be to prioritise day slash night game as well as online dating to maximise your short-term dating options. Just to provide a quick explanation, there's three reasons why you'll want to prioritise these if you want to date casually. 1. These environments have the highest concentration of women who have a similar mindset of pursuing short-term dating. In other words, the women here are more promiscuous, which is actually a good thing for male casual daters. 2. There is a near-infinite amount of options as there will always be more women to swipe on and more bars and clubs to approach women at. And 3. Your reputation is totally safe as you don't run the risk of being accused a player by people in your social circle. Now, obviously, if you're going to take this path as a normie, it will take a lot of optimization and work, especially in terms of perfecting your online dating profile. It's not easy for normies to get a lot of quality matches online unless they have a Simon Levive tier profile. However, there's still nothing stopping fully looks maxed and well-presented normies from having a decent level of dating options. Adding even more to this, if you also have money going for you as a normie and still want to date casually, you can go one step further by travelling the world and approaching at the same time. The strategies of online dating and cold approach will more or less be the same, but it has the added aspect of travelling as well. This can literally put your dating life on steroids. If you're a normie from the West, you should be able to get 10 times better results if you travel to the places mentioned earlier compared to what you'd usually be getting running the same approaches in Western countries. Anyway, that's it for the ways to optimise your dating life as a casual dater. Now let's take a look at what the best path is for those wanting relationships, which is my preferred path. Chads also come to the picture here for the first time as the first question for them is the same if they're looking for casual dating or a relationship. So if you're a chad looking for a relationship, you'll follow the same process as all the other normies who are also at this point. Anyway, the next question for both of these two groups is if you have any dating options from within your social circle. This means school, college, work, social groups, sports and so on. If your answer is yes to this question, then you should prioritise finding a partner from one of these environments, which for the record are called warm approaches. The reasons you should prioritise these is because they provide the best opportunity to meet a high quality woman who you'll likely have many shared interests with. Another major advantage is since you've already known each other beforehand for some time, You'll have had an opportunity to know more about her personal history before considering her as a potential dating option. In other words, you'll have some knowledge of what she's like in person, whether she's had a promiscuous past, what she was like in her previous relationships, if she's smart, if she's good with money. This contrasts online and cold approaches where it's possible you may meet a woman who wants to hide one of these things from her past that she doesn't want you to know about. The last reason you should prioritise warm approach for relationships is because generally speaking, the women in your social circle are going to be far higher quality on average compared to places like nightclubs and dating apps. So if you're looking for relationship material and warm approach isn't an option, good luck finding it on Tinder or in a nightclub. This leads to a problematic situation for some men out there. Because what if your answer to this question on having options within your social circle is no? Unfortunately, I know for a lot of you, warm approach isn't an option, especially if you work in a field such as software development or construction. So if you work in such a field where there are very few women, you need to answer the next question, which is do you live in a big city? And hopefully you do, as this will still provide lots of opportunities for day game approaching. 
As stated earlier, if you're looking for a relationship, online dating and nightclubs aren't going to be the best in terms of meeting high-quality women. But if you're approaching women in the street, coffee shops, bookshops, there's a higher chance a woman here will hold good values and be relationship material. How about if you don't live in a big city, if you live in a small town of say under 25,000 people? If this is you, it means your situation is quite precarious because there'll likely be next to no dating options you can pursue. Not even day game because a town might simply not be big enough. Therefore, if you've been following this path till now, your only option will be to relocate somewhere larger and then follow the same process of maximising day game. Finally, exploring the last path of the flowchart which is Chad's looking to date casually. If this is you, you also have to answer if you are neurotypical. If your answer is no, you should focus exclusively on online dating because this means you won't have to worry about your conversations ruining your chances in real life. I actually have a friend who somewhat falls into this category. He's good looking and over six feet tall, but his game is atrocious. So I gave him the advice to exclusively date online where he can pretty much just let the women come to him as his dating profile racks up hundreds of matches. The final possible path is if you're a neurotypical chat, in which case you follow the same strategies as other casual daters, which is maximising all three cold approaches, day game, night game and online dating. This will give you the greatest abundance of options. Anyway, that's the video and hopefully you have a clear idea for what you should be doing in future for your dating life. If you enjoyed, make sure you press a like button and leave any thoughts you have in the comments below as it helps the YouTube algorithm.